Um, it's called to order to the uh, October 5th, 2015 meeting Parks and Recreation Board. Um, I guess we'll start with roll call. Lamb. Priest. Here. Colwell. Yes. Lawson. Here. Maxwell. Here. McGann. McKnight. Here. Prophet and Watson. Here. Moving on to the minutes, did anyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yep. I did not have a chance to review the minutes as I was not here at the last meeting, so a motion to accept the minutes as published. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Vote? Or do, can we just... You can do huh? All in favor. favor. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, moving on. Bike donation, bike station donation by Signature Bank of Arkansas. Connie? I had a picture to show you, but the Signature Bank of Arkansas has been donating banks, uh, bike stations along the Razorback Greenway. They put one in Bentonville, they put one in Springdale or Rogers area, and they're also putting one at, uh, we're going to put it at Lake Fayetteville there by the dam site where the kiosk is, the little rock work. So real proud of that, and, and hopefully other donations like that will come in. Where are they going to place it along the greenway for us? It'll be by the Lake Fayetteville Dam. Lake Fay okay. There at the kiosk where we okay. have the rock right work. The right there on the corner. Perfect. Mm -hmm. People <coughs> be able to Softball see Softball fields, a lot of people come in the park right there, so it's right there. Yeah. It's right there. Great. It'll help that short that people like to take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in it, it'll help people that have flat tires. They can air them up there or work on their bike. Just right come there. with an ATM. <laughs> really? no. <laughs> Not quite that fancy yet. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Connie. Um, next item on the agenda is the Kessler Mountain Trails Master Plan Update. Allison? Um, so, as you know, we are doing a master plan for the trail system up on Kessler, and we've had um, two stakeholder meetings and one public meeting. Um, so, Progressive Trail Design is our consultant on that project, and they are working on putting together some Concept, and we'll be scheduling a second public meeting in early November. So I would encourage you all to come and give us your input. Um, and once we get a date set, we'll send it to you so you guys can spread the word too and make sure that everybody is aware of it. But it's going well soon. It's going well soon. My yeah. brain is tired. It's going well <laughs> now. And we'll be scheduling that front or meeting. All right. is, there, is there additional trails or just improvements to the current trails? Or? Both. Um, definitely improvements to the existing. We're aware that there are some drainage issues um, that have come along with uh, the kind of the intense storms that we had this year and also the increased usage we've seen up there. Um, we want to look at access points to the trails. We're trying to direct everyone over to the east side from the park now so that people aren't clogging up the, um, the top of the mountain and blocking people's private residences. Um, so we want to make sure that we have adequate access um, and then also look at potential additional trails, perhaps a variety of different skill levels and distances. Okay. Do know this will come before Parks Board for you all to vote on and then it goes on to City Council. We'll have to have their approval too. Now will we, will we keep the uh, access at the top of the mountain right below Rock City? Because that's still private residence, private property, right? Right. That's that's being talked about right now. So the effort is to well I eliminate that at some point. As far as parking up there, yeah, yeah, we don't really have a, a plan for additional parking in that area. Okay. It needs to be reduced. It'll be reduced. It'll be yeah. Um, isn't there an online uh, comment that we have set up as well? Yes, <coughs> yes there is on our website, website uh, on the parks page. We have a project for Kessler Mountain Trail Master Plan and there's a fill and print PDF. You can fill out email to us right. access, um, and we'll take your comments that way too. We'll also soon be releasing a survey. <laughs> as, as for the comment? Yes. Same, virtually the same thing as the PDF? No, it's not. PDF is more of just an open, you can write in comments, you know, whatever comments you want. Um, 
that the survey monkey is the series of questions, and we'll send out a press release once we have that finalized and get that out to the general public. Okay. All right. It's moving along pretty good. I mean, things. I think we do need to add a lot more trails. Huge asset. Any other comments? Moving on. 2016 proposed budget presentation Parks and Recreation staff. Well, we're not quite ready yet. The city, they're still working on the final numbers, particularly for our capital improvement plan. So until that gets kind of finalized, we can't bring it before you to review. Of course, according to the park ordinance, you're to uh, you all are, are to um, look at and approve our annual budget as well as our CIP and give an annual report every year. Those are our things that the ordinance spells out. So we'll present that next November or this coming November. Our next meeting. Your next meeting. Okay. All right. That'll be on the agenda next time. Next on the agenda, regional park update, Allison Jump. All right. Well, some of you were able to attend the tour just Um, but the park's moving along. I think the dirt work is about 90% complete. Um, they should be starting to pour the concrete sidewalks um, in a couple of weeks, and the foundations for the buildings will also be going in towards the end of the month. So things are moving along pretty quickly out there. Um, the soccer fields are pretty much filled. The irrigation's in. They put in the sand and topsoil mixture for the field. They'll be putting down a temporary grass seed on that for this fall and winter so we don't have any erosion issues and then we'll spread those in the spring. Um, the baseball fields will be also spread in the spring um, and we're still on track to be open then up in the fall of 2016. <coughs> Good deal. When do we lose Lewis? Um, it's the end of June, June 30th, 2018. Okay. So we're kind of ahead of schedule. Okay. Anything else on the regional part? What you said, fall 2016, <coughs> November, <coughs> October. Is there a the goal is for fall soccer to be able to yeah. be able yeah. to be played there, and that begins um, August 20th, around the bell. So, so hopefully. Summer, really. So hoping an opening in August out there. So baseball will be 27. It'll be spring. Yeah. Allison went. <laughs> <laughs> it will be here before we know. Which that gives a ton for the grass to grow in and, and all those kind of things too. All right, moving on. We have another business agenda item here. We were going to get, have Alan Spann give you just a quick update on the end of the year, kind of what's going on with recreation. Yeah, so just wanted to give everybody an update on how sort of the summer went, rec recreation program-wise, um, and what's left for the fall. So just a brief update on um, some numbers for the summer. We ended up with about 1,400 adult softballers in our summer league. We've got about 1,000 or so uh, playing fall adult softball. The fall adult softball season winds down next week with the tournament. That's actually one week in the upcoming announcements. It's the 12th through the 15th rather than the 19th. Um, so adult softball will be winding down next week. Our summer camp program ended up with 514 campers. Um, another full year of summer camps. Um, our fall soccer program has actually grown. It's as big as it's ever been. We have 1,525 kids playing soccer right now in the fall. Wow. How um, much of an increase is that over last year, do you know? Um, only, it's less than 100, but still for fall, usually our spike is in the spring, so to see a, an increase in the fall is encouraging. We'll have 16, over 1,600 in the <coughs> spring. Spring. <coughs> is that max, or do we have room for more? Um, it depends on the age group. Right now we've got a little bit of field space in some age groups, but we're, we're about capped out in terms of field space. So the addition of a little bit of overflow space at the regional park and then hopefully if we can get lights, then we'll be able to use a bit more. Um, there is a, some new recommendations coming down from the State Soccer Association. They want to shrink some field sizes and expand roster sizes as to give every kid a little more time 
um, with the ball at their feet. So with the project, projected roster sizes and field sizes for next year, our team numbers is going to come down. <coughs> that. So that kind of opens up some field space as the teams get bigger. Um, so we look forward to having a little bit extra wiggle room next fall, I guess. No problems with tainted referees or anything like that? Not yet. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it hasn't trickled down that far. <laughs> Thank goodness. But I am for sale. <laughs> um, the adult kickball summer and fall seasons have both been full at 36 teams. We've had over 500 adults in each season. Um, so what we've been actively trying to do is get up the adult population a little more active and involved in programming. We're really hitting that with these numbers in terms of softball, kickball, volleyball. Um, our adult volleyball season begins at the end of the month. Um, we're nearly full there, but we anticipate another 150 or so adults participating in uh, indoor volleyball at the YRCC. Uh, the Square to Square, or actually the Fable Race Series, kicked off this summer. So the Splash and Dash was our first Fable Race Series event. We um, anticipated and kind of capped it at around 100 to 110 uh, people. We ended up with 118 participating. So we were really thrilled that we went over our, um, our estimate and what we thought was our capacity in the uh, uh, Splash and Dash event. <coughs> uh, wonderful feedback on that. And then also wonderful feedback on our Square to Square bike ride, the partnership with Benton. And rec. Um, ended up with 722 registered paid, wow. happy smiling bikers that rode from Bentonville down to Fayetteville. And we're going to flip that. So in the spring, we'll be starting here, riding up to Bentonville, and hoping we can sustain those numbers. And I think we will because we're getting really positive feedback. Um, a lot of people that really loved it didn't think they could ride that distance. And so I think that, that the idea that we can really appeal to the beginner bike rider that thinks I can only do like a 10 or 15 mile bike ride. And for them to know that they can do that, I think is, is the only avenue for growth in terms of the square square ride. We had anticipated 300 plus. That was it. Yeah, we thought 300 or 500 would be our cap. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Um, it's great. Mm -hmm. So you're planning on just twice a year then for a square twice square? Year, square square. So um, the idea is that we'll have somewhere around six events per year, which is about all our one program manager can handle the yeah. size of these events. Um, we'll sprinkle in some other things like this year we've added the glow in the park uh, fun run and movie at Gully Park. So we'll be able to sprinkle in little things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea that that event twice per year. Do you have the dates and stuff for the spring already? May 12th. May 12th. And then it'll depend on the football schedule for next fall, but sometime similar this year or early spring. I was just thinking, do we have time to get in all the publications and stuff since it's <coughs> that far out May 12th? All the biking publications and outdoors and stuff, because I mean, if you look at Northwest Arkansas as a whole, a square to square event, there's a whole lot of stuff to do that. You know, Botanical Gardens, Crystal Ridges, and yeah, we've actually already met with um, I mean, it's a the Trail Mix folks over at the Walton Arts Center. We're looking to partner with them next fall so that the Trail Mix and Square to Square sort of coincide. Um, hmm. But yeah, we have, I think Connie met with the other uh, directors at the Northwest Arkansas Directors Meeting, spoke to Springdale Rogers, other cities that might look to sort of get involved in some capacity. So yeah, we definitely see the room for growth and more of huge event. activities along the trail. So we're going to explore that. A little festival going on in each little town. Ah, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And I, how far are we marketing it outside of social media? Like, are we just doing like regional in Northwest Arkansas, or how far are we getting out with that's the? That's as far as the reach that I've seen. Um, we hit about 50 to 75 participants that were outside of Northwest Arkansas. So we had a handful from Texas, a handful from Oklahoma, Kansas. Central Arkansas, Missouri, um, Missouri, right? Um, but as far as marketing, I, I don't know that we're getting other than digitally. I don't think we're getting in a lot of publications. <coughs> Connie, is there any way we could like team up with the was Northwest Arkansas Development Council <coughs> to tap into see if they'd want? Because I think Chuck, it's a great idea. I don't see I don't see, see well, there's no reason there's not a reason that we can't have a festival and have people come in town generating generating HMR for something like this. It's a great two-night, three-day deal, and people could do all kinds of things in both counties. And it might have to be spanned over that time, because if we got much bigger than we are now, I mean, just the sheer quantity of people is quite the undertaking. So if we were to go, you know, over that thousand number, trying to have that many people on the square at one time or on the trail,
trail all the time. It might need to be we just out ran out of, ran out of space. We, we can figure it out. If we got three hundred thousand motorcycles, that's true. We all need to figure out a couple thousand bikes. Yeah. yeah. Quieter. It would be quieter. You just put them up and have one sort of one in the other sort yeah. of the other end. I, I must brag. It was extremely ran well. I mean, I was I was so proud of it. Uh, Fayetteville and Bentonville teamed up real great, and um, Tiffany Gulky just and Allen, they just they had it all figured out well. It, it was good. The only part, the only really comment that people didn't like was the last couple of blocks going from Dixon Street to the square. Well, it's a hill. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just at the end of the ride. Yeah, at the end of the ride, but it was a hill, and you know, was the, the way were it was. the streets blocked off? For that portion of it or anything? No, yeah. just volunteers and course monitors. I think we had some police assistance at some of the intersections and some of the <coughs> crossings, but no streets were closed. Yeah. I mean, not, not, of course, not this next one, but I could see almost having it where it goes one direction for a Saturday and turns around and gets back to Sunday yeah. or something like that. We had quite a few people do that that day. When yeah. Our advanced riders just came down. Listen to a couple songs and then turn around and make that. I know people that rode to Bentonville that morning. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. To join up there and come back. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, there's definitely a ton, yeah, a ton of room for growth. A ton of room for growth on yeah. that. But the fact that the first time event, 720. Oh, yeah. That's pretty huge. Yeah. I could I could see Emma shut, I'm virtually yeah. almost shut down yeah. as a yeah. festival. I don't yeah, know about Rogers area. Yeah. It, Downtown is a little further away, but that big area um, with the little rest stop across from um, whatever you call it, the promenade. Mm -hmm. I think there's space there for something, and there's a second thing. Mm -hmm. They had him to go into M Waves, the race, right. which was really good, and I think they had some wonderful ideas for next year too to make it go even better than ever. A little bit cleaner, so yeah, it's always growth on top of the knowledge that you gained yeah. the first time. We mm. we hit it the day right. Yeah. The weather was absolutely yeah, was perfect. Gorgeous. And there were how many that signed up the day of I it? Think like somewhere around 200, 100 and, oh, okay. 175 yeah. signed up the day of. We had almost, almost I think it was 40 to 45 percent of total signed up either the day of or the week of after registration had closed. Sure. So word spread wow. late. They had a neat backpack was what you got. So maybe at Christmas time we could find nine more maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I heard that you had to order some more uh, some more to give them out. We did. Well actually the backpack issue was that um there was a shipping issue so we had um to last minute overnight some some blank ones without the square square logo. We had plenty um, ordered, but we had to we had to order some blank ones because they just we could they got the ones with the logo on them got lost in the mail somewhere. Oh, wow. <coughs> wow. <laughs> Did they ever show up? Yeah, and people okay. came in and traded them out. Okay. We, tra we had probably a hundred or so people come in with a really? blank one and traded out for one with the logo. Wow. And we had how many that read that rode the shuttle? Three hundred and fifty. Yeah, it was nearly, nearly four hundred. Yeah. Wow. Either rode the shuttle back up. Mm -hmm. Either way, either took it up or rode it back. Yeah. So that was a good service. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kind of a nightmare for us when yeah. all of a sudden we had all these Still. applicants, but it, it went well. Yeah. Yeah, so it at least gives us an idea of the interest and how to best prepare for that number of people next, uh, next spring. Yeah, 300,000 is a big number. Yeah, we're going to hit that. I mean, yeah, it's a great point. We could do it for bike exclusive barbecue. Why can't I much rather have a bunch of bike riders? Than yeah. You know, in comparison, I know that <clears throat> maybe this is the second year they've done it where the, you, um, I think they call it the Triple Crown, the mountain bike ride, mm -hmm. all three, you know, Lake Wilson, Lake mm -hmm. Mount Sequoia, and Lake Fayetteville. Uh, do you all know the numbers on the people that have been doing that? They've only done it once. Okay. And it was Hundred and something. Okay, and, it, and obviously with more publicity, that could be quite large too. I think mm -hmm. that was a non-paid, just a yeah. just a ride event. Okay. All right. Any other news? 
I was going to ask if they could comment on the um, where they are with the the Dunn houses there at Gully Park and. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Curious. So um, we received two bids. You know, we put it out. Um, City Council at the last council meeting approved for us to go to a, a real estate broker, a real real estate broker, to sell the homes for us. So uh, we had one applicant to do that. Um, it went to real assets, and so um, we had two bids on the big house with the shop area. Um, it came in with apple seeds. Apple seeds did have a, you know, apple seeds is is a group. They're, they they try to. Their mission is to educate young children on eating good, community gardens. <coughs> they do a lot with the Fayetteville school system, and it, it's, they're wanting to grow. Right now, they have their farm area there by Ozark Natural Foods, and they're wanting to expand it. So they wanted to purchase this house if they could have a lease agreement on two acres right there beside it, at the back of, of it, that they could have a a farm, an educational farm there, to plant gardens and, and all there. So uh, we've worked with them, uh, staff, we figured out what two acres could work right along there for them. Uh, the other contingency, they've got to go through a conditional use permit for them to have the small business there. They'll have to go through the planning commission. That won't happen until um, October, I can't remember the date, 23rd, 26th, anyhow later on in October, and then they'll have to receive um, their financing and the house inspection to pass. So that's the big house that's going before council tomorrow night for approval. Do you have an idea how close it came to the appraised value? Yes, yes. It was uh, 211000 uh, 500 211000 No, it's 211000 Yeah, it was 211000 Is is their price on it and what whereas we had two hundred and when I got that mixed up two hundred thousand and then the appraised value was two hundred and eighteen thousand five hundred. So we we thought that was a, a fair a fair amount. And then the other the smaller home we received actually three different bids on it and we ended up at the appraised value one hundred eleven thousand five hundred for that house. So I, I feel real fortunate. I think they're they're good <coughs> kids, and I'm glad we're not in the real estate business anymore. <laughs> so council has to prove that tomorrow night. Right. Okay. Is there any other news? I just wanted to mention the other race series events coming up. Um, Glow in the Park. I mentioned that. Um, that's on your upcoming event. She also runs for the park to the other 2015 race series event. Uh, three different distance run starting at uh, different locations, all ending at Walker Park. Um, and just other events upcoming um, that aren't necessarily our events, but events that we're involved in are in the parks and trails. Uh, the Hero Half Marathon, the Fayetteville Half Marathon, Arden Park, Puppets in the Park. Um, lots of stuff still coming out, so it felt like we were winding down, but we still got a full slate of events. All right, well, if there's no other uh, other business, I'll move on to announcements. Um, October 9th, fall volleyball registration ends. October 12th to 15th, fall kickoff kickball tournament. October 14th, fall trekker public meeting. And I guess Alan had said that the fall adult softball tournament is the 12th through the 15th, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, October 17th, you've got fall soccer and first touch ends. October 17th as well, 17th annual celebration of trees. 17 years, that's amazing. Um, October 22nd, Vaughn Richardson <laughs> annual fundraiser center or annual fundraiser. The 24th, youth soccer jamboree. The 27th, fall volleyball season begins, and October 29th, glow in the park. The uh, YRCC annual fundraiser is at Town Center? Not this year. We actually this year. had a shift um, <coughs> for a variety of reasons and because of, uh, um, because of Mike and Marcita Anderson volunteering their home, they've shifted it um, to their place 
Um, okay. It's going to save the center and the board a lot of money um, by them volunteering their home. Obviously, you don't have to pay any rental fee. Um, they're going to pony up a lot of the money mm -hmm. for the um, catering. So this way, it's a little bit different, but it saves the board a lot of money, which essentially that money goes back into the programming, which is the ultimate goal. So that change was made. If we, no where do we find that information on that? Is mm -hmm. it available anywhere? Yeah, Have we done invitations or anything yet? or? I don't know. The board. Actually, ticket sales. It's going to be similar in that um, they're still looking for sponsorships and ticket sales or donations um, for attendance. So I can send out that information to everybody on how to, how to get involved, how to either donate or just take a ticket. Yeah, because I know quite a few people that would love to attend that. Is that Thursday night, 22nd? <coughs> it's a Thursday. Yeah. <coughs> Many of us will be gone to our Arkansas Recreation Park Association meeting. So we won't be there, but we'll be in Hot Springs. All right. Um, if we don't have any other, adjourn. move to adjourn. Second. 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 I guess we're adjourned. Thank you. Right.